Hi there, and welcome to Premiere on Script. My name is Eli, and I'm here to share my experiences as a full-time video editor that wanted to speed up and make my workflow within Premiere Pro more efficient, standardized, and streamlined. Now, I had heard and learned a bit about scripting within After Effects, which is extremely powerful and can speed up the workflow by quite a bit, and I wanted to see how I could bring that into Premiere. Now, as I Googled around, I saw that it's possible to do this, but it's kind of tricky to figure out. There's documentation on it, and there's people that say that they can do it, but there's no good resource where anybody's sharing their path to learning this stuff or where they found the resources to do it. So that's the goal of this YouTube channel, this blog website, is I just want to put out there what I found and what I used and what I found helpful and see if it can't help anyone else who's trying to do the same thing. So very quickly, we're going to start with what you need in order to make this work. Now, of course, you know you need Adobe Premiere. What's not so obvious is that you also need to have another Adobe application called Adobe Extend Script Toolkit. Now, you can find this in your Creative Cloud application toolbar, whatever you want to call this thing. Just go to the app section and scroll down. Somewhere in here, it's going to be in here. It looks like this. It's this little scripting icon. And this is going to be where you can write your JavaScript and test it within not just Premiere, but if you want to get into any other Adobe programs too, uh, this is your pathway to learning to script. On top of that, in order to get your scripts to run within a panel form, as in, in Premiere, you have your project panel, your timeline panel, you know, these dockable panels you can drag around and set up your workspace custom to your workflow. In order to get your scripts to run within those, you're going to need a text editor of some kind. And we'll go into exactly what makes the right text editor in a later movie uh, where I can share how I came to the conclusion on the text editor that I use, which is Sublime. And finally, it'll be great if you have a knowledge of code. When I started trying to script, I had a very basic knowledge of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And I learned these by taking courses on uh, Lynda.com or LinkedIn Learning and on Code Academy. Both have great pathways to learn this stuff pretty quickly, at least the basics. And so I would highly recommend that you kind of have a knowledge of that before coming here and watching what I'm doing and what I'm sharing, because I am in no way a computer engineer, which is going to help me relay some information to you, video editor to video editor. But to have that basic knowledge is going to be huge and help you in building your own tools. So as I mentioned before, when I started looking into scripting in Premiere and Googling around, everything came up with After Effects. After Effects is built for this stuff. In After Effects, you can go up to File, down to Scripts, and over to Run Script File. And from here, you can run any JavaScript that you write within the application. It just is built and integrated into the application that easily, which is great. But you have to know that that's not going to be how Premiere lets you do it. Premiere is a bit more complicated. It's not that complicated once you learn about it and get some templates going and kind of wrap your head around it. But just know that it will never be that easy. Just as a side note, if you're watching this and you want an easier introduction to scripting and you think that scripting within After Effects would also help your workflow, then I would recommend starting with that. And there are some great sites that you can go to that will help you develop these skills. The course that I took right off the bat was this After Effects Extend Script Training Complete Series by David Torno on ProVideoCoalition.com. This is extremely comprehensive. It's like 14 hours altogether, but really gets you up and running with how this works. And the knowledge transfers over and is very relatable to scripting within Premiere. I would highly recommend it if that's where you'd like to start. You could also go over to aescripts.com where you can browse scripts that people are creating in After Effects, Premiere, all these other programs. And you can also take some tutorials and learn. Now back to Premiere. After Effects makes it so easy, but that's not how we can do it within Premiere. The way we run our scripts in Premiere is by creating an HTML panel. Basically, it's no different than 
a mini website that just is pulled up in this dockable panel. And from there, you put in a button or some type of interaction that allows you to run that script, which is held within this panel's file structure. I will show you a more technical overview in the next movie of what this file structure looks like. But for now, let's leave that at the intro. And how about I show you some examples of some very basic scripts, just so you know that, one, this is possible, and two, I know what I'm talking about at least a little bit. So here I am in Premiere. I have this dummy project, and I have right in the center of the screen three examples of custom extensions that are running my scripts already preloaded. Now, I just have these preloaded because I don't want my computer to crash while running Premiere and the screen capture software. But in order to pull these up, what you would do is you go over to Window, Extensions, and then you can see I have all my extensions that I'd like to load. This extract audio markers is also a scripting panel that I've created. So let's go through these one by one. This first one is just about as simple as it gets. You type in a message, you click go, and what's going to happen when I click go is this panel is going to send information to my JavaScript, which is going to tell Premiere to just give me an alert. And it says hi just about as simple as it gets, but if you use your imagination, you could see how you could have a script go pull a lot of metadata from a very specific area of your project that you need and deliver that back to you in an alert box. This next panel asks us a question, how many seeks, and that's embedded in this button. And when I click that, it's just gonna run a script that tells me how many sequences I have in my project. And it has one. It looks like I have one sequence over here. Let's just duplicate this a couple times and then drag it into a couple of these folders to make sure that this script is walking through my entire project and, and looking through my entire project and make sure that we're getting the right number. Four. So once again, you can see how fast that works. And while it's very simple, it could have some wider applications if you where to mix it with some other possibilities. Now this final one has the most interaction of all, and it will just allow us to move one bin into another. So I want to move folder two into say the movies bin. And when I run this, it's going to do just that. Now if I want to run it again and move the movies bin into the folder one bin, we can run that and it will do it again. So a little bit more interaction, and you could also see from this example how if I put a bunch of fields in one of these HTML panels, I can get Premiere to do very specific tasks for me that would be broad enough to apply to a full project, but then I can focus in on the areas that I need through inputting my information. This final script that I have here is actually one that I use in my workflow all the time. If I'm editing a video and I'm sending that off to an audio engineer to process, there may be a dog barking in the background, there may be birds chirping, there may be a door slamming, and I like to note those as chapter markers in my sequence and then run this script which will go through my entire project, find every single chapter marker that I've set and return me with the sequence name and the time code so that I can send that off to get extra attention from my audio engineer. So if I run this, you can see that I had a couple chapter markers down here placed, and then I duplicated these sequences. And I can run that, and there we go. It gives me the time code in seconds, and the title of the marker reads the audio issue that I'm coming up with. Now, normally this would return the sequence name based on the formatting that I use to name my sequences. I have it formatted so that it will remove some information and make it a bit easier to identify each sequence. But right now, because they're all sequence 01, it's just gonna return those back as they are. So I started out just creating buttons to run my script within the program, much like that extract audio markers tool. And then I started branching into giving these panels some inputs, like the move, one bin into another. 
And all these ideas keep coming up to expand these into more and more comprehensive tools that will just do more. So there's a lot of potential with these extensions. Now, as I said, I'm just sharing my own experience with this. So if you've looked into this a little bit and have any other experiences or have gone about it in a different way, please share yours by commenting on the blog or on YouTube. Some of the links that I've shared earlier, I'm going to put in the blog post paired with this video. So come to premiereonscript.com to find those. And in my next movie, I'm going to go into a little bit more of the technicalities of how to set up one of these extension folders and get it to run if you already have the coding experience to write the scripts. So thank you for watching this movie. Have a good one, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.